Remember Google Glass? In 2013, Google started giving out the futuristic wearable to select universities and developers to play around with. While most initial users appreciated Google Glass's ingenuity, they quickly realized that the burden was on them to find real use cases for the product. The product's main features were equivalent to a glorified camera, the only difference being it was mounted to the user's face. Unfortunately, Google Glass felt rude to wear in public, the same way it's impolite to stare at your phone during a face-to-face -face conversation. Using Google Glass in public posed risk of being branded a glass hole. Given these flaws and the cost prohibitive $1,500 initial price, it was clear to developers that this was never going to become a mainstream consumer product. There simply was no demand. Google has a history of putting out products they think will get mass adoption due to their sheer user base before there's actual consumer demand. Remember Google Plus, the Me Too product launched to compete with Facebook? A supply first strategy can be very successful under the right conditions. With marketplace apps, for instance, supply of sellers is usually more scarce than buyer demand. For example, with food delivery company DoorDash, the issue was not finding users who wanted to order food, but rather getting restaurants, the suppliers on board. As more restaurants were added to the app, customer demand increased organically because they would see ads in person promoting that their favorite restaurant now offers delivery. Apple's approach to entering new markets is the opposite of Google and most marketplace apps. Rather than creating supply of products with perceived existing demand, Apple methodically incites demand for its new products. Take for instance when Apple removed the headphone jack from the iPhone 7 in 2016. iPhone users would now need a special adapter to use their existing headphones. Given Apple products are known for being slick and minimalistic, the added clunk was definitely a major annoyance to many iOS users. Luckily for them, Apple unveiled AirPods, sleek, new, wireless headphones that allowed for shared listening experiences right alongside the new jackless iPhone. By formulaically creating demand by making iOS users' existing headphones obsolete, AirPods now make more revenue than Spotify, Twitter, Snapchat, and Shopify combined. Now, all the signs seem to indicate that Apple is using the same demand generation playbook to enter the AR VR space. In 2017, at Apple's flagship product conference, CEO Tim Cook made a major statement when he did not publicly unveil the latest iPhone. He instead announced Apple's new AR kit, which enables the creation of AR applications for existing Apple products. This was a calculated decision by Apple, years in the making, signaling to developers that AR is a top company priority without releasing a premature hardware product to consumers. This let the company generate demand interest from both developers and users before launching the actual product. Even more importantly, the announcement also brought Apple precious R&D time to observe customer needs and ensure their eventual AR VR hardware will be in hot demand. The lesson here is that successful product managers and entrepreneurs are able to either identify underserved demand like DoorDash or be able to formulaically create demand like Apple.